All right, so the next one is human reproduction. So what we're going to do is look at kind of the anatomy and some functions, talk a little bit about cycles and um, a few other odds and ends. So we'll start with the male anatomy since that's what the chapter starts with. And we'll start with external structures. And in class, I usually ask what's external and, and the penis obviously is, is, is one of the ones that most people will say, and it's a crack up, but they won't say it loudly because they're embarrassed, I suppose. But um, then I, often the other one that I get is testes. And if your testes are external, you have my permission right now to uh, stop watching this video and run to uh, the doctor's office because you're missing a structure, which is called the scrotum. So uh, we want to make that perfectly clear. Your testes should not be external, but uh, they should be outside the uh, the body cavity, uh, and we'll talk about that. So, okay, so uh, the penis, uh, its function uh, is urination and sexual reproduction, sexual intercourse. And so there are different parts to it. So we, we, we should talk about that just a little bit. Uh, the urethra, uh, which uh, is uh, a tube that for two purposes in a male, uh, one is for urine, and the other is for semen. And so the passage is semen. So um, that you need to know. Uh, Spongia erectile tissue, uh, that is for a male to get an erection. And uh, then the glands is the head of the penis. And then there is something called a, a, a prepuce. And, and the glands has most of the nerve endings. I guess I should say that. And then um, the prepuce, which is a foreskin, and during a circumcision, this is uh, what, what is removed. And I typically talk about this in class, so I think I'm going to do it here, is uh, circumcision. Uh, you know, I always usually ask the class, why is it done? Um, what is it for? And the typical answers are religion, um, uh, uh, a lot of religious services. And then the other one is... Uh, to reduce infections. And that one probably really is not true. If, if a male is taught to take care of the penis properly, there should be no increase issues. Um, occasionally there is uh, where a, a foreskin is too tight and an erection, it can, it can become painful. So there are operations to help with that. And that may be a medical reason to have a circumcision. Um, and the reason I bring this up is because uh, if you decide to have children, this is a decision that you and, and or your, your partner is going to have to make uh, on whether to circumcise uh, in, uh, your male child. And this is typically asked in the hospital right after birth. They want to do this um, fairly quickly uh, within the, the, the next day or two. And, and the reason I bring this up is childbirth is an emotional process, always go through. And so often couples do not talk about this. And then all of a sudden the doctors are asking, hey, do you want your, your son's, the end of your son's penis cut off? And, and it's not really the end, it's just the skin. Um, but I'm not sure you want to make that decision when you're an emotional, if you haven't talked about it. So something you should prepare for um, especially if you know you're having a male or even if you if you don't know the sex of the kid, um, something to talk about. And so I guess the question would be is what would that decision be? Um, and what I'm hearing from psychologists uh, and um, people in the business at this point, um, often you might hear, well, just don't do it and let them decide later, although there can be more complications at an older age. Uh, uh, some psychologists are saying it's probably just better to do what dad has if you're not sure what, because it makes life a little bit easier. Um, you know, the kid, kid's taking a shower with dad or goes in the bathroom with dad's in the bathroom and looks and sees that, you know, um, the penis looks different. And then all of a sudden it's like, what's wrong with your penis daddy or what's wrong with mine? And so often it's just thought to be maybe easier that way. But, but that is something you should talk about. Okay, the scrotum. The scrotum is the other external feature, and it's a sac outside the body, holds the testes. It turns out the testes in most species, do not, uh, at least mammals, do not do well inside because of the heat. Uh, sperm does not like body temperature. Likes to be a couple, two degrees cooler uh, than body temperature, and so the scrotum will keep those at the right temperature. 
Um, they descend right at birth, and if they do not descend, they actually will have to go in and, and get them to lower. Uh, if kept inside of the body, often a male, male then will become sterile or can become sterile. So uh, something that definitely needs to, to be dealt with. Uh, things like whales and seals, um, their body temperature because the, is cool enough that they can actually be inside. So scrotum and penis. All right, moving on to the testes, which are in the scrotum, again, not external, uh, is um, they have several different parts in them. Uh, some in the first two duels, that is uh, really what produces the sperm. Uh, there are Sertoli cells that produce nutrients and then interstitial or Leydig cells, uh, which produce testosterone. So the purpose of the testes really is to produce sperm and to produce testosterone. Uh, that will move uh, some of the ducts. Uh, one of the, and I, and I guess it's a duct, it's called a duct. It's a little thicker, but it's the epididymis. It, it lays right on the uh, external side of the testes. Um, and that stores and matures sperm. Uh, sperm typically stays in there for about three weeks. Uh, when, it, when it's first, it's not really a sperm. Spermocyte uh, doesn't have a tail, so that tail has to be um, added. And so it takes about three weeks for, for, for sperm to mature. Uh, then it will move to another tube called the vas deferens. And this is a tube to transfer sperm from the epididymis um, up through the, eventually the urethra and, and out. Uh, then we have the ejaculatory duct. Um, and this is a small little tube that actually combines the vas deferens along with um, ducts coming from the seminal vesicles. There are two of them. And uh, then the last two is the urethra again for sperm, uh, or for semen with sperm in it and urine. All right, the only other thing on this I'd like to talk about is male sterilization. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but if you've heard of a vasectomy, um, what that actually is, is they come in here and they actually um, will cut the vas, um, the vas deferens. And before they used to actually, they would, uh, it's an uh, outpatient procedure. Uh, they go in, they would actually do a little slice in the scrotum they would go in and do a cut and they would fold these back and actually tie them shut. Um, and then so, so back up the scrotum and you're good to go. Uh, you, would, you would have to be tested, make sure that there's no leakage because um, that, that is a possibility, but, but for the most part, it's an outpatient procedure and uh, there you go. So uh, fairly, fairly safe and there'll be swelling and things like that, but uh, fairly safe. So a vasectomy. Um, today they don't they don't do the cut. They, it's usually laser, and, and they pretty much um, uh, fuse them fuse them shut with heat. Uh, what I what I want you to you know, and again, this is another question I ask: Are vasectomies um, are they reversible? And the answer is. No. <laughs> okay, now that I said that, the answer really is yes, uh, but no. Uh, and, and here's why. Here's what I want you to realize. If you're going to get a vasectomy, you probably should consider it permanent. Um, what they have found is they can reverse them. They can go in and cut them and, and open them back up, uh, but often there's scar tissue. And so depending on the length of time you've had the vasectomy, uh, it's typically less successful to reverse them. Uh, and then if you're getting a vasectomy for a short period of time, I'm not sure that's your best choice. Um, so uh, just assume that when you're making this decision that this could be permanent, I guess is probably the best way to put it. All right, so that's that. Uh, going into the internal structures, let's talk about the glands. Uh, we have uh, three different glands I want you to know. Uh, first is a pair of seminal vesicles. Uh, they produce about 60, maybe 70 percent, depending on what book you look at, of semen. Okay, semen is a fluid, and um, in that is is the sperm. And um, this is high in fructose. It, it is thought um, probably the major function of this 
is to um, give sperm the right environment. It's fairly alkaline, uh, has lots of fructose for energy, and uh, that is what's going to power those mitochondria, getting the sperm to swim in the right direction, hopefully. <laughs> uh, the next one is the prostate gland. And if you look on here, the prostate is right here, a um, large gland. Um, and it also has uh, nutrient citrate. Um, it also is alkaline, and it is thought that this might be um, what neutralizes the acids in, in a female's vagina to encourage the sperm um, forward and for the sperm not to be killed. And I had mentioned prostate cancer and, and slow growing cancer. It is a problem though, because of its location. Um, if you look here, uh, you can see that the tubes go through it, which is not great. Um, and how they check for prostate issues I don't know if you guys know, but that's the, uh, the finger uh, through the anus, because when they go up through the, the anus and the rectum, they can push and they can actually feel the prostate as it enlarges and hardens. Um, and I'll tell you males, like I told you, most males will have problems. Um, it will get larger, it will get harder. That's just called getting old. Um, and if that shuts down, it can make urination a problem. Um, and it can make... Um, Things getting through a problem. Uh, if they, if it is prostate cancer, they have to go up and remove the prostate. The problem is lots of nerve endings all through here, and when they take this out, that could be a problem that causes erectile dysfunction sometimes, depending on what nerves are affected. Uh, it can also cause uh, um, incontinence. Uh, people having trouble holding onto the bladder. Um, that is is another problem. And so, um, yeah, so it, it, it can be can be an issue. All right. Uh, the prostate gland, though, again, um, probably 30 to 40 percent of the semen. And again, the nutrients, this one has citrate in it and neutralizes the acids in the vagina. And then there's a bulbal urethral gland. Um, if you learned this a long time ago, they used to call it the Cowper's gland. I don't know why they changed it to bulbal urethral. It almost to me, it sounds like the you know a uh, clown's name. So yeah, bulbal urethral. The clown comes to your kid's birthday party. You might want to think twice. Um, but anyway, so um, when a man gets an erection, there can be a clear fluid often on the end of the penis, and that's where that comes from. And this is thought to neutralize the acids in the male's urethra. All right, then we have spermatogenesis. This is the production of sperms. Um, so here you can see this would be a seminiferous tubule. And these cells that line that tubule and in the inside are the ones that are gonna go through um, meiosis to produce sperm. Uh, and you can see, you know, here's a picture of the sperm. And, I, and on the very end, you can see kind of a very light colored um, sac. So that is the acrosome. That is the sac that has enzymes to eat through the jelly-like coating of the egg. Um, then you have the head area, which has the nucleus, and um, here they have a centriel, and then you have this middle piece where all the mitochondrial are, and that is what's uh, firing the tail, and then the tail is actually a flagellum. So that is what a sperm looks like, and the process is uh, shown on the right where you go from the very beginning of, of uh, uh, mitosis, um, and then you get into meiosis one and two. Um, and I didn't even notice, but this is not labeled right. That would be meiosis one right there. Hmm. Mistake on their part. Okay, but anyway, so uh, what I do want you to understand then is that males will start going through this process um, at puberty. And they then will continue this process through their whole life. Um, so meiosis in males starts at puberty, and then it, it will slow down as they get older, but uh, males will produce sperm until the day they die. All right, with that, we will stop.